Hello everybody, lovely to be on the program again. I just love doing this and talking to everybody and uh, hope to see some names coming up in a minute. And I've just realized that I haven't plugged in my microphone. Even though I've been sitting here for 20 minutes meditating, I was probably in another world. Hello Rachel, and Susan, nice to see you. Hi Lauren and Valerie. I'm going to miss some when I plug this in. I don't, as the case may be. Here we go. Yes, there it's in. Hello, Freya and Natasha. And, oh, Natasha, nice to see you. And Annette. Hi, Alicia. Oh, thank you for this precious hour. Well, I really enjoy it and look forward to it, Alicia. And I love it when we talk about all sorts of different subjects and um, today of course we're going to talk about the Mahatma and I've had quite a lot of questions about it and I'd love to know if you use it already because it is such an amazing awesome and special energy it when 2012 came and it was returned to us we were told that it could accelerate your ascension a thousand fold and it was the highest frequency energy we could all use and then of course the Christed Mahatma came in and that was even higher and they still say that it will accelerate your ascension a thousand fold I mean it really is completely amazing and awesome and oh, I suppose while I'm waiting, we could just have a card because before I came on, I picked a card from the Atlantis pack and I got creative expression. And the guidance is to do or make something creative and channeling your divine energy into a unique, unique beautiful, harmonious, and original way. And so take this opportunity to develop your senses well the Mahatma energy certainly develops you <laughs> I'm glad you can hear me Rachel that's um that's really good I hate it when people say oh we can't hear you because there's nothing I can do about it hi Yolanda from South Africa and Alicia nice to see you and I also picked a unicorn card before we came on air so this is for absolutely everybody and one came out that doesn't very often come out recently and it's Archangel Uriel and the unicorns and the message is to become a peace ambassador because of course Uriel is about peace the unicorns are about peace oh hi Kirsty and Patty and Annie and Sabrina and Rhea and DG and Tanaki, and hi Melody, Melissa, and Gianluca, and Deborah, and Lisa, and Hannah. Oh, I think we can start in a minute. This sounds really good. Hi Tracy and Kay. That's lovely. While we're waiting, I haven't seen Lynn's name come up, but she did send in a question, but she also sent in a photograph. Last week we were talking about, no, last week we were talking about UFOs and she sent this one which was apparently taken in Sweden and is of clearly a UFO with Metatron's energy helping it. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that just absolutely awesome? So thank you for sending that, Lynn. And I was absolutely awestruck when I saw it. It's just beautiful. Okay, so shall I take a couple of questions first because then we can make sure everybody sees this. Oh, Lynn, you just missed it. I pick, put a picture that you sent me of the UFO. Awesome. Thank you so much. Just awesome. Now, uh, Sandra says she's um, oh she's doing the Angel Path to Ascension course, and her guardian name, angel's name came out as Melchizedek, 
And then again, she tried again, it was Malachi. And she researched and found it was the same name. And this is a question I often get asked, is he a guardian angel as well as an ascended master? And the answer is a name is a vibration. And if you're on the same vibrational energy as him, your guardian angel might choose to give that name to you. So sometimes people get their guardian angel is called Raphael or Michael or the name of one of the great archangels. And they say, is my guardian angel really Archangel Michael? The answer is that it's an angel on Michael's vibration. And so you will have a connection with Michael through it. So that's um, one. Oh, I love this question from Christiane. Will we drive cars based on the Mahatma energy soon? Well, it would be a nice thought, but I think it's very, very unlikely. And um, because we are going to be powering the world with tidal energy and with sun, solar energy, before we do any of the amazing spiritual energies that we can use those. And then she says, why should we use the archangels if the Mahatma energy is able to heal and balance the chakras as well? Oh, there's long answers to that one or shorter ones. The Mahatma energy works primarily with the glands. Also, it is a great pool of energy to which many, many beings gave their, gave part of their energy to create. And so it can have a much wider influence than just an archangel, just an archangel, than an archangel. Third part of your question is, you're now about to get more balanced. A therapist told you that the right side of your body is tight and full of tension. And can you, you say, how can you use the Mahatma to balance up and set my energy? Well, you can, of course, bring it through to balance your chakras, and that will have a great uh, influence. But the right side of your body, as I'm sure you know, is about the future. So if you're tense about the future, it's the right side of your body that will tense up. It's about father energy or men in your life, husbands, sons. So if you're tense about some a male in your life, maybe even a male boss, that can also cause the right side of your body to tense up. It's also to do with work, the work-related side of your life. So those things are what you explore if you want to relax the right side of your body and bring yourself fully into balance. And of course, you do that through working on those aspects of your life, but you can also call in the Mahatma energy as an additional energy to, to help. So what is the Mahatma energy? And this is answering lots of the questions that have come in. It's a very high frequency cosmic energy. It is known as the avatar of synthesis. So that is the same thing is as the Mahatma energy. And it was made in the golden era of Atlantis. And all these amazing, very high frequency beings put their energy together into a pool and people could freely take energy from this pool to use for whatever way they wanted. It was so powerful. So the Christ light went in there, the Buddha energy, the spirit of equilibrium, many of the great archangels. And so it was something that was extraordinary. It was so beautiful and high frequency that it was this, well, almost white gold or golden white, just that color mixed together. So it was very, very delicate and pure. And as I've said already, it is said to accelerate your path to ascension a thousand fold if you use it. And it's very 
easy to use. It helps you to build your Antakarana bridge to source. So that is the bridge that connects you to your soul, your monad, and then up to source. And it helps you to build that. So it's got the 12 rays in it as well. I mean, it is amazing. It was withdrawn at the end of Atlantis because it was so powerful, its power could be misused. And then at the harmonic convergence in 1987, we talked about the violet flame that was returned at the cosmic, at the harmonic convergence. And the Mahatma energy was returned for our use at the same time. So we were deemed ready to take that energy in. And before you ask, you can use it. Anybody can use it, but you've got to ask for it. So to draw it from the great pool, you have to just ask if you can have it. And it flows through your bodies, your physical, your emotional, your mental, your spiritual bodies. It breaks up any hard crystallized thought forms or emotions that you have, any emotional patterns that you haven't got rid of. So Christiane, you're talking about the right side of your body being tense. Well, then you've probably got some beliefs or some emotional patterns concerning work or your father energies or men in your life, the future. And you can ask the Mahatma energy to break up those patterns and those thought forms and those beliefs. And that, that's a very good way. You can use it. So it can help you with any personal problem and to resolve situations by breaking up the energies held in those situations so that you can see them all from a higher perspective. Oh, they can simply dissolve and go away. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? I've been asked also if you can send it to other people, and you can. You can send it without karma because it is such a pure energy containing the Christ light of unconditional love that it goes to that other person in an unconditional way and is only used for their highest good with the agreement of their soul, of course. So that's how it works. Now, it works to balance and heal your glands. Now that is the, Mahat, the first level of Mahatma energy that was sent through us. Then of course, the Christed Mahatma came through at an even higher level, and that worked with all 12 chakras. So it works on the etheric levels as well. So, <laughs> I love the fact that it re-energizes the glands that keep us youthful and sexually alive. It also governs the immune system and the metabolism. So it's really, really helpful on a practical level. Do you know, the very first time I ever called it in on a workshop, and it was a small group of us, about 12 of us, and it was in Devon. And this was many, many, many years ago. And everyone was absolutely amazed by the energy that came through. And they were all boiling hot when it came through. And that afternoon, we all went down to the beach together. Now, this is England. That sea was freezing. And I looked up suddenly, and I saw almost the whole group out in the ocean, holding hands, dancing up and down in this freezing water, all laughing. And they asked, aren't you cold? They said, no, we're bringing the Mahatma energy through and it's keeping us warm. So <laughs> that just to me was amazing. And Lisa says, her guardian angel is Miguel. So, that's Michael. So you're connected 
to Michael. Hi, Perizan from Turkey. And Bavan Kyra. I don't think I've seen that name before. And Marlene and Tapio and Rob, Robbie. <laughs> uh, Robbie says he once meditated to get his guardian angel's name and he saw the name Harp. Can that even be right? A name is a vibration. It can be anything. And, you know, as you change your vibration, your guardian angel changes his or its and sometimes brings in another vibrational name for you. So when you shift, that name will probably change too. I knew somebody who's, who got a guardian angel. Oh, no, it was a unicorn. It got a unicorn named Dobbin, and she was so upset that she got a Everybody else had all these beautiful ethereal names, and her, guard, her unicorn was called Dobbin. But about six months later, said, give her another name and said, you know, I was testing you, and you've shifted your vibration in accepting that name. And now this is the name I want you to know me by. So they test us. They have a great sense of humor. There's all sorts of reasons for them to give you a name. <laughs> I like yours, Rhea. I'm not sure that this is the time and place for giving you messages from Metatron and Kumikar, though I am sure they're here. And if they want to, they will impress it on me. Okay, Lisa, this explains a lot about the tension in the right side of your body. Absolutely. And, of course, on the left side, it's the other thing. It is anything to do with your mother, aunties, daughters, um, wives, if you're a man, um, your home life, all the feminine things, and also anything you're holding on to from the past. They all reflect in the left side of the body. I've just told you, Patty, so there's the answer come through. You're on the wavelength. Hi, Richard. Okay. Um, do stay tuned because right at the end, I'm going to take you on a visualization to Archangel My uh, Metatron's retreat, which is the, to his 12th temple, the ray, the 12th ray. And here we are going to access the Christ in Mahatma energy to bring right through you and leave with you for the next week or as, as long as you need it. So that's at the end today. Yeah, Rachel says, wow, I don't know if that was in response to what I've just said or what I said earlier, but it's true. Okay, you call in the Mahatma energy. And so it's very simple. Just say, I now invoke the Mahatma energy to flow through my body and my entire energy system to accelerate my ascension and that of Earth, the planet. Allowing my life to be in service to the, div <clears throat> to the divine. And I'm sure you're all analyzing why my throat should go as I talk about that. I'll have to think about that one time. That was really interesting. I think I'm always thinking that I don't do enough and I really have to do more. And possibly that's what it's about. So the, the glands, when it works with the glands, it harmonizes them and helps them to... Um, It helps them to relax. It helps to rebalance them. Um, for example, the pituitary gland, it controls your aging process. And if it's all got shriveled, as our glands tend to do, then the Mahatma energy starts to bring it back again to, um, to plump it out, to fill it with energy so that it can start to reverse that. You can ask it, you can call it in, into that gland and ask it to help rejuvenate you. And then you have to do your part and feel rejuvenated, act rejuvenated, thank it and focus on it. And that's when it really, really works very quickly. 
And of course, the pineal gland, sorry, I should have really started with that, wasn't I, in the crown chakra. It contains the knowledge and wisdom from the universe that you're ready to receive. And this is where the light is emitted that builds your light body. And the pineal, it protects the structure of your DNA. And in a way that honors your soul choices and maintains your codes and keys of your divine spiritual self. And so it keeps you. The, the whole purpose of the pineal is to keep you in divine perfect harmony. So if you call in the Mahatma and you visualize your pineal gland as a ball and you see it filling with the beautiful gold white light and um, that starts to help you move forward. Now, Irena, you're saying, some are telling me just a few people are allowed to I think you mean prepare for this energy. So the true is to receive it and use free from up space. My English is not just. Okay, it's for everybody to use. So the sooner you use it, it's the more quickly you accelerate your ascension. It goes up the ladder, up, up your chakras, and helps to connect you to your monad or I am presence and it helps to accelerate everything. <laughs> Jeannie, I'm happy you've come in too. A little late, but as you say, there's always lots and lots more to do and learn. Yeah, Marie, you said you've read about the Mahatma energy in my books, and it's wonderful. It is wonderful. I talk about the Christ in Mahatma in my Ascension book, and the book I wrote with Tim, we talk I'm sorry, talk about the Mahatma in the Ascension book. That's the basic one that first came in with the description of what it does to all the glands. And then the Christed Mahatma was, is, for, um, is in the Enlightenment and Mastery book, the Archangel Guide to Enlightenment and Mastery that I wrote with Tim Wilde. And so your third eye is your pituitary. And this is known as the master gland because it sends out um, hormones. So they control the working of all the other glands, your urine production, oh, your growth hormones, the release of eggs. You know, it's, it's the gland of eternal life. And when this gland is in perfect balance and harmony, which of course the Mahatma energy helps you with, then you flow with cosmic abundance. It's a real cosmic energy chakra. You into abundance and all the things that your third eye does, it helps you develop it. So this is the gland that sends out the rejuvenating hormones. And it is amazing. And then, of course, your third eye. So many people do have problems in their throat chakras. And this is the thyroid gland. And this covers your metabolism, the production of antibodies. And the Mahatma energy can help your gland, help your metabolism in a perfect way for your body until you are vibrant with health and energy. If somebody is looking for a spiritual way of having more energy, more aliveness, the Mahatma is a very good way. And of course, a lot of people will go to the doctor and receive something allopathic, and that might be necessary if your energy is very bad. But if you are working on a spiritual frequency and your very and your light and you Feel you're just slightly out of balance the Mahatma can work really really well okay and so when you've brought your Mahatma energy into the thyroid and it it's opened up the the chambers in your throat chakra then you're able to communicate telepathically with all species and make a connection 
this is a very, very delicate and very powerful chakra. Um, it holds some of the wisdom from Atlantis. And so it's a, a chakra that is, I'm going to say, it, it needs to be treated with great care and respect. And I always think that bringing in the Mahatma energy is a wonderful way of doing that. Okay, then there's the heart chakra, which is the thymus. And this governs your immune system. And of course, we are, oh, wow, Mary Lou, you've got my codes of power. And today the silent stones and the web of light, how lovely. And the codes of power meditation. You're just reading the codes of power and you just love it. Giving everything I wanted to know about the Aborigines and Uluru and Lemuria. She is highly recommended, everybody. Thank you, Mary Lou. That's absolutely wonderful of you to say all that. And I had such a wonderful time when I wrote the Codes of Power because I rented out my house. I back, I was for my 60th birthday. I backpacked around Australia with the intention of meeting the Aborigines. So I'd set the intention. When you set the intention, the universe responds. And I met somebody in Sydney whose ex-husband had been at school with some Aborigines who were now elders. And she gave me a contact. And so it took me two months to get up to the very, very northeast tip of Australia in Cooktown. But there I met the most amazing Aborigine elder who I write about in the book. He becomes a character in the book. And, oh, such integrity, such courage, such wisdom. It was one of those most humbling and amazing times in my life. I went to his house about three times, we had all his family, and I put all the information and energy he gave me into the adventure story, which is the Codes of Power. Right, Christina, you say, using this energy can heal at a distance. You really need this. You have so many teens with depression that you mentor. Okay, it's a very, very good high frequency energy to send to children or to teenagers. Remember this though, that depression, sense, um, in order to be depressed, you have to be a sensitive. And this is endemic now because so many of the kids are very, very sensitive. But if they can receive and accept a high frequency spiritual energy, that is working with the Christ energy in it of pure unconditional love, that can be really, really helpful to them. And they can accept, they can take it in whether they believe in it or not. And of course, it will only go to them if it's right for them. And you have to ex accept that. And oh, Mary. You've had a, a lame leg since your mother died suddenly. Yeah, I'm very sorry about your mum. It's a terrible shock. But of course, your um, leg, especially if it's on the left, well, if it's on the left side, it's to do with your mother and how to move forward in life. And if it's on your right side, it's about how can you manage without her. And so it's, um, it's really important that you, you just look at that and, and give yourself time and space. To get it. Yeah, Rachel, the Mahatma energy is about caring for others, not just yourself. Sending out this energy can help the world and, and does help the world. So let's move on. Um, yeah, so if you work with the Mahatma energy in your heart sensor and um, working with your thymus gland, just asking it to surround your thymus and to make it bigger and plump and take in that energy, then your immune system starts to get better. And um, then you become vibrantly healthy. Of course, if you are absolutely flowing with the Christ in Mahatma energy, you are connected out there on every level, and your body and your glands are healthy. Solar plexus, your pancreas deals with sugar and emotional nourishment and so the 
insulin that it excretes is not just to deal with the physical sugar. It's to deal with emotional sweetness, mental sweetness. And so oh, the Mahatma helps this chakra to come into a state of self-worth and feeling good about yourself. When that happens, then you don't need all the external sweetness. You become balanced in your solar plexus. So it's a very, very useful energy to bring in. And the navel chakra was, is about reproduction. The fifth dimensional aspects of reproduction in the navel chakra. And this is also about the creative force that creative energy, the visions you can create that you are ready to create at this time. And, and of course, it's this aspect that communicates with and withdraws in a new soul when you're ready to have a baby. And if so in Atlantis, they would meditate for the soul that they could best serve. And they would send out the energy for it from their navel chakra connect with one or two such souls that step forward and then take a decision to bring it in to physical incarnation. And so the navel chakra holds the, the masculine force of the master builder to make us, help us to create. And the sacral chakra, this is the ovaries, the gonads, the testes all sexual and reproduction organs. And so the Mahatma helps you to balance these glands in such a way that, you're, that you can draw in tri transcendent love. So that's the purpose of it. Even if it's been removed, so you've had your ovaries out or your womb out or anything, then the Mahatma energy works on the etheric part of it so that it still does the same job. So, so helpful. And so in the base chakra, this is where the adrenals are, and you, you respond to fight or flight situations when you're in that third dimensional energy. But the Mahatma energy lights them up and helps them to relax, helps you to bring in trust, and spiritual discipline so that you are able to um, build your life on a, a much more solid foundation. Okay, Rachel, you said um, this is what was going on with your crown last night. You felt pressure on your skull. Okay, if you were calling it in or if it was coming because you were constantly calling it in. I must confess I have not used it for some time, but I used to use it a lot. And what I did then was call it in and ask it to constantly flow through me so that wherever I walked, I left golden footsteps of Mahatma energy so that you're leaving a trail of it wherever you go. And that's a wonderful way of doing it because you know that it's constantly coming through you. And so in the Earth Star Chakra, I'm going to go back to now to the Transcendent Chakras. In the Earth Star Chakra, it helps you ground and motivate your potential. So it also grounds your spiritual, it activates your spiritual grounding to the planet, helps you with your connection into the heart of Lady Gaia. And this is really important as we start moving into the higher levels of the fifth dimension that we don't just work with our earth star chakra, but that sh that chakra is connected into Lady Gaia. We were doing this on, on this Facebook Live the other day, weren't we? And so then the Mahatma energy is flowing right through you, right into Lady Gaia. And um, okay, right, Jenny, thank you. I'm glad you think it's amazing. Is there a Buddha Mahatma? The Mahatma contains the Buddha and the Christ energies. As I said earlier, it was made a pool of energy from many high frequency beings, including the Buddha and the Christ 
spirit of peace and equilibrium, the 12 rays, some of the archangels, and they all, all were incredibly powerful. Oh, thank you, Marilu, again. The two Ascension books of Diane and Tim is a must. It's truly invaluable. Well, we've tried to give everybody a real boost up the Ascension ladder, the possibilities with those books and with enlightenment and mastery too. Okay, so with the stellar gateway, which is of course connected to your monad, and more and more people are starting to open up to their monadic energy now, you, you see the, the golden white or white gold energy flowing down into your stellar gateway and filling the chalice. And this is starting to activate. Remember, your brain is like this in Atlantis, right out here. And our brain is now mostly etheric, but you can still connect with that. And so those energies, the 90% of your brain that we're not using, you can expand your energy and link into your cosmic master self to all that is through calling in that Mahatma energy into that expanded part of your brain. And then the soul star chakra, which is below it, and it activates that fifth dimensional brain that we're talking about to start bringing back and helping you remember your gifts and talents as a master. The energies that you had in the golden era of Atlantis. And then the causal chakra or causal chakra and the Mahatma streams into it. it this also activates, this too is beyond our current head. The gifts and talents um, and powers that keep you in divine harmony because the causal chakra is your peace chakra it is your personal moon it is your divine feminine energy it is your connection to the spiritual realms the angelic realms the unicorn realms and so it's a very very important chakra rachel you healed your thyroid by diet and nutrition and herbs that's absolutely fantastic that works on the physical and this works on the spiritual and as you know they're all connected yeah elaine it helps you connect with your avatar self absolutely it's it's that powerful oh rita bless you it's page 204 in the 55 steps to the light archangel guide to ascension thank you Philip, how many times can the Mahatma energy be used? All the time. You can do it every morning or every evening. You can, even as I just explained, ask it to run continuously through you. I think that you have to do it quite a lot of times before the energy flows through you of its own accord because you've asked it just to continue to throw, flow through you. So uh, I think that you've got to just allow it to start that process right let me see what questions i had i answered about the cars based driving but well, cars drive based on the mahatma energy soon no i don't think so um and so anna says you feel very strongly connected to the mahatma you've recently become more aware of it what's the best way to connect with it the best way is to close your eyes ground yourself um, invoke it and then pull it down through your glands. I think that there, I know I've done a CD on it in the past. There's also information in these books. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm trying to look at any things about the, um, about the books. I've been trying to choose a book out of the guide to Ascension or the book about mastery. Or the hail health sale dilemma have your other books are they both suitable for get beginners to your teachings um barbie they are quite advanced books um the first one was the archangel guide to ascension and then the next one which is much more detailed about the chakras etc and and the temples of atlantis and bringing the higher energy in is much um more advanced so, Lucy, you have the Archangel and Ascension book, okay. 
I thought when I started on book, I wish I was with you on that trip. <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm still reading this from Anna. What's the best way to connect with it is call it in and then meditate, bring it in and ask it to come into your space. You did it strongly, it came through strongly in a meditation you did at a workshop with Tim and afterwards you had an image of yourself being bathed by it. You wanted to put it into a painting, you sent, you sent me a picture of it. The energy came through and you called it the avatar of synthesis, which is the other name for the Mahatma energy. Ah, you feel that your artwork can transmit this energy, which of course is wonderful. How can you make sure it is pure and from unconditional love and not mixed up with lower energies or ego? Well, it depends on your general energy. If you're doing it with the intention of putting absolutely pure Mahatma energy into your painting, then that's what will happen. If you're sitting there thinking, oh, I hope this is good enough, that's ego, and so it gets tainted. If you just open your heart and say, please use me to put this energy through, whatever it looks like, that has a pure and high frequency energy. So let go of self and just do what you feel you need to do. And, you know, it'll come through into your paintings. Everybody that sees it will take a little bit of a way, it away. And also, as Taya says, it's for the whole planet. Okay, Melissa says that her son is 16. He's been suffering with debilitating depression for years. It's hard to find something that helps him. And that must be very, very difficult. And the Mahatma energy may help him he is a sensitive so he may be taking it in and yet yeah, gandhi cared for his people he was known as the mahatma it means great soul energy and so it was the energy of great great mighty souls who shared some of their energy for everybody mm -hmm. Jeannie, when you talked about the aborigines in the north of australia my spirit reacted energy started to flow through your body and even now, it's still flowing. Wonderful. Well, that was the codes of power we were talking about. And um, well, Rachel, you saw your daughter's soul coming before she was born. How fantastic. And of course, we will hopefully in the new age go back to being able to connect with the soul before, well, when consciously, when we're making the decision. Is there a chakra to balance sinus? When we're making a decision to have the baby, is there a chakra to balance sinus, ears, and facial pain, we wonder? Yeah, that's all to do with the third eye. So, yes, it, call it through into your third eye. And a lot of that is about not accepting your spiritual powers, your um, things like clairvoyance, etc. Oh, Christina, how wonderful. That's how you got your kids. You meditated for them and called the souls in. That's wonderful. I know one of my daughters, they meditated and they asked for an unusual child. They certainly got one. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. I think if they did it again, they'd ask for a nice, easy child that fitted in with the family. Um, so it does make a big difference what you ask for. Be careful. Okay, now I've answered Anna's question. Oh, Rebecca's asking me to talk more about spiritual discipline. I don't think we can do that tonight. Oh, there are lots of people asking things. Yes, Lynn, it can heal. And I showed everybody, Lynn, I've seen you coming on since, the picture that you sent me, which is a lot. No, it's not going to just come up again. Oh. I'm no good at finding things. <laughs> I'll just find it now. It's that amazing, amazing spacecraft that you sent through. It was. Um, okay. There's a lot of these are questions about other things which I might take on other weeks, but I think we're a bit focused on. Um, yes, Yanni, that's important. It, the Mahatma energy works even if you're missing parts of your body. It works on your etheric if you haven't got 
a physical part to your body. So why don't we just do a little meditation now to go to Archangel Metatron's retreat to the temple of the 12th ray and just receive the Mahatma energy over. So let just close your eyes and ground yourself. And I'm going to put this up, which is the golden Atlantean dragon while I do this. Okay. Close your eyes. Relax and center yourself totally. Be aware of Archangel Metatron inviting you to his retreat. This is in the etheric above Luxor in Egypt. You're just finding yourself in the most magnificent building, the most wonderful place you can imagine. And in front of you, the mighty Archangel Metatron himself is standing. He reaches out a hand and you find yourself drawn to him as he takes you out of the main building into a temple. The temple of the twelfth ray. And as you enter the temple, a vast white gold diamond is placed right over your aura. Just feel the facets of it clearing and sharpening your energy and brightening your light. It also enables you to accept and be bathed in the higher aspects of the Mahatma energy and the Christ light. Stand in the center of the temple and just mentally say, I now invoke the Mahatma energy to flow through my body and my entire energy system to accelerate my ascension and that of earth allowing me to use my life in service to the divine. And then be aware of the most glorious, warm, golden white light flowing down into your stellar gateway chakra. And know it's Activating and connecting your brain patterns to your expanded cosmic master higher self. And it's coming down into your soul star. Here it activating and connecting your brain so that you can start to remember your gifts and talents. And down into your causal, just filling the whole of your causal and activating your brain so that you connect more closely to the world of spirit. And it's moving down, flowing into your crown. Filling your pineal gland, relaxing it. Just see it emitting more light, enabling you to be in perfect divine harmony. Then flowing down into your third eye. Just soothing and balancing your pituitary gland. 
asking it to send out the perfect hormones so that your life flows with harmony, cosmic abundance, and you're rejuvenated. And then it's flowing down like a waterfall into your throat chakra, filling your thyroid gland, balancing it, allowing it to balance your metabolism in a perfect way for your body to keep you healthy and vibrant and full of energy. And then down into your heart chakra, just filling your thymus gland, plumping it out so that your whole immune system keeps you strong and healthy and open hearted. And then flowing like a waterfall into your solar plexus, soothing and surrounding your pancreas so that you absorb emotional and mental sweetness and come into full harmony, self-worth and wisdom. Down into your navel chakra, lighting up the creative force within this chakra. Down into your sacral, here it's surrounding all your sexual organs, stimulating the glands in a perfect way so that you can draw in transcendent love. And right down into the adrenals in the base chakra. Feel the Mahatma soothing them, healing them. lighting them up and filling them with trust and faith. And then it's coming right down, right down into your earth star chakra below your feet. Beautiful golden white energy, filling your earth star helping you to ground and motivate your potential. You can feel it going right down, connecting you into the heart of Lady Gaia. And Lady Gaia is reminding you of the vision for your life. Perfect happy, healthy, alive. The Mahatma energy that's flooding through and over you is moving down into the very center of the earth. Going down into the center of the earth, creating a vast pool of light with the intelligence to move to wherever it is needed. And then be aware again of the Mahatma energy flowing through and over you, breaking up old emotional patterns, old thought patterns that no longer serve you.
and thank the Mahatma and ask it to continue to flow through you for as long as you now tell it to. Know that the energy will continue to run through you for as long as you have asked. And then open your eyes. Love to hear any comments, any feelings. I know we did it rather quickly, but there are, as I say, I've got a whole CD of it and um, lots of information in the book. And thank you, Lisa. Glad you like the lots of information. I like to give lots of information. It's fun, but I also like doing meditations and I love answering questions. And there are a lot more questions this week that I've had time to answer, but we can take them, move them forward. And now let me talk about what's happening in the future. Um, how does it affect the platelets? I've got extreme flat problems with low platelet counts. Okay, just call it through and ask it to do whatever is needed for the highest good. Let the spiritual energy work. And it, when the spiritual energy works, then miracles can happen. Yeah, yes, I can't read who asked that question about a thyroid, but that's true. Barbie, oh, you've heard me speak at several workshops. You still have lots to learn. Yeah, I've been at this for 30 something years, being given information and, and sending it out. Amelia, you haven't done anything wrong. You don't talk to the angels anymore. Okay, ask them to talk to you. You know, don't make it difficult, just ask them. Right, I'm going to tell you what we're doing next week because we're not doing a Facebook Live next Wednesday. We're doing a Zoom with Tim on Crystal Grids and it'll be from 7 o'clock until 9 o'clock. And we have got some awesome, awesome Crystal Grids to share with you to anchor the energy for next year. So whatever you want to create in your life, the grids will anchor them into your life. And I think that's so important. Also, we're doing a, a crystal skull grid. We're doing a whole lot of different ones. I think we're doing five different grids to help you. One is to keep your whole family and household in harmony over Christmas. Not always easy and would be really good um, for a lot of people. And... On Wednesday, the 16th of January, that's coming into the new year, I am going to do a um, Zoom on working with a guardian angel and the angel of your home. So I hope that that will appeal to a, a lot of different people as um, and it's going to be going back to basics, but also lots of new information. And then on the 27th, the last Sunday in the month, I'm going to do a very powerful zoom and this is about the 12 fifth dimensional chakras it's going to go into a lot more detail a lot more deep visualization and energy and also bringing in the sixth dimensional chakras so you can feel them feel their colors feel their energy and start to bring them in because now more people can bring in their six dimensional chakras. When I did that Met Metatron Cube Zoom, Metatron said that everybody who did it touched the sixth dimension. And this has enabled 10th dimensional unicorns to come into our lives and start to touch us. So this really takes you on into a much bigger level. I do hope you'll join me because I think these are really, really important. And in the intervening Wednesdays, I will be doing the Facebook Lives as usual, except over Christmas. So next week, a Zoom, that's 12-12, important day. Zoom with Tim on Crystal Grids. The 16th of January, working with your guardian angel and the angel of your home. 
and on the 27th of January at the fifth dimensional and sixth dimensional chakras. So, so important and exciting. And what I was holding up, in case you had your eyes closed when we did the, the little meditation, was the golden Atlantean dragon because it's a very similar energy and frequency to the Mahatma. And the Mahatma comes in at different levels too. But the colour of it always reminds me of the Mahatma. So, oh, Susan, you got your ticket to the Zoom. Don't tell me which one. But I'm looking forward to seeing you on it. Yes, Lynn, you believe in miracles. And if everything is possible, and it is. And thank you, everybody. Lots and lots of love. And see you next week, the week after. Maybe the week after, oh, it's, it's very near Christmas. Let's, let's decide nearer the time what we're going to do. And I'll put it up on the website um, because I've been given lots of questions from lots of people. So lots of love. Take care. Bring in that Mahatma energy. Just thinking about it makes a difference. Ask it to come to you. And we'll all be new people next year. Bye-bye.